Hi, this is John Hope Bryant, the founder of Operation Hope. This is the Hope Global Forum 2020 annual meeting. Healing a nation, opportunity for all, America on reset. I'm honored to be here with a new friend, uh, one of, uh, I think, uh, not only America's heroes, but really an international symbol of opportunity and hope, uh, Jerry Yang. Uh, if you are a Silicon Valley uh, fan, if you uh, grew up in the last um, 20 or 30 years, uh, if you're of this generation of internet savvy people, you've got uh, Jerry in part to thank uh, for uh, your freedoms. Uh, Jerry um, is a genius um, and I'm probably making him uncomfortable, but I don't care as I like okay. him and I'm going to tell the truth. Uh, Jerry, um, I think MIT named him one of the 100 innovators of the century, something like that. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. He founded Yahoo. Let me get that out of the way. Co-founded Yahoo. Um, and it, and someone actually said, basically, he's, res, he's in part responsible for the Internet as we know it uh, today. And I don't believe that's an, uh, an overstatement. Um, we're going to get into this, but one of the things that also astounded me was the knock on effects uh, of Yahoo. And, um, and uh, everybody's got their official sort of business account, then it, it, you know, you got your Yahoo account. And uh, all the heroes and sheroes I know have the Yahoo account. And uh, Jerry was in China, his first trip there, I believe in a long time. And he uh, met a tour guide there. And uh, the guy's name was Ma. And that tour guide, uh, inspired, I believe, by Jerry, uh, a few years later, I think, um, it might have been a few months later, created a little company called Alibaba. <laughs> and Jerry, hopefully he tells a story, Jerry uh, went on to put invest a little money in Alibaba from Yahoo, and that became one of the most heralded investments of an American company in China in all of American history. It, the multiples on that return were off the charts. And hopefully we'll get into some of that. So I want to talk a little bit about his professional uh, trajectory. But in the time we're living in now, Jerry and I have been having a lot of personal conversations about what really matters, and what matters most. And hopefully we get into that too. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my friend, Jerry Yang. Thank you. Thank you, John. I, I, I uh should have asked for the right to speak first because uh, uh, you probably can't see me blushing in the uh, webcam, but uh, I am. And I, I would just say that um, you call me a lot of names in that introductory speech that I don't deserve. Um, I, I believe you and your audience are talking to uh, one of the luckiest guys in the world. And I consider myself lucky um, because uh, yeah, I worked hard all my life. There's no question, but the, ability for a Taiwanese immigrant to come to the United States and to really live um, what you'd only read about in books and, and really is just a hope and a prayer uh, to go to Stanford University, to start a company like Yahoo. And as if that weren't enough, I was lucky enough to be part of that early, like you said, early um, internet revolution in China. Um, but even to this day, I'm an investor uh, in early stage companies. I, 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 I've been really just inspired and quite frankly, learning a ton from our entrepreneurs that I get in touch with every day. So um, you won't find a luckier person than me uh, uh, to, to, have, to be going through what we've gone through and what I'm going through now. And quite frankly, um, you know, 2020 is one of those years that I think we will all look back and realize that there were deep introspection and the conversation you and I've been having and the lessons I've been learning from you uh, have been transformational for me. So it is my honor uh, to be here in front of your audience. I wish we could be doing this in Atlanta, um, but, but really I think it's an honor to be called your friend and I, I take that very seriously and I hope I can live up to it. No, you're, you're, you're the real deal, Jerry. You're, you're authentic and every one of our conversations has been precious and special. And um, uh, the first time we had a real conversation, Jerry was just sitting there, just with his notepad, just you know writing stuff down. And here's a guy who's straight up engineer, like left brain all the way, who took a 40% uh, 
a flyer from Yahoo on a little vision called uh, 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 Alibaba that turned into a, almost an eight billion dollar return. <laughs> Uh, 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 unbelievable. And then double down and made another investment after that. Again, one of the best investments uh, in American investment history in, in Yahoo's history. Uh, and Yahoo was originally called like Jerry and David's worldwide. What, what was the name of it? Jerry, it, and it, you know, David, David and Jerry's guide to the World Wide web. And David Philo is, is my co-founder. And, um, you know, he is even more left brain than I am. Uh, and he, um, did not want his name on anything. He did not want to be associated with anything publicly. So when I changed the name of the website to Jerry and David's Guide or David and Jerry's Guide to the World Wide Web, he's like, oh, no, no, no. We got we to gotta take that. We got to take my name off of this thing. So I remember we spent all night one night um, going through the dictionary online and just trying to figure out what we're going to call it. Um, and the word Yahoo really stood out to us because uh, uh, if you look up in the dictionary, Yahoo means somebody who is very uncivilized, very uncouth, um, you know, it, it, it uh, described us. And, and David grew up in Louisiana and he said, look, I was called a Yahoo growing up. So it was perfect. Um, you know, we, we called ourselves, gave ourselves the title Chief Yahoos um, and just really never took ourselves seriously. And, and I'll tell you one quick funny story. My, our venture capitalist, our first venture capitalist is Mike Moritz, who from Sequoia Capital, who's now a legendary venture capitalist in his own right, um, having done so many more deals after Yahoo. But, you know, he gave us a check, um, you know, if our fund, first funding was like a million dollars. And, you know, we're a couple 20 year old somethings have never seen that much money. And I said to Mike, I said, you know, do you think we should change the name Yahoo? Because nobody's going to do business with a company called Yahoo. And he looked at me in my eyes and he says, look, if you change that name, I'm taking that check back and tearing it up. So, um, you know, it just goes to show it takes a village of people with similar passion, vision. And, and Mike was one of those guys that really saw the potential of Yahoo very early on. Yeah. And it shows also the power of cool and the value of cool. Uh, J Jerry and I think we're cool. And because it's a Silicon Valley interview, we were going to both sport T-shirts today at this very proper event. And, and luckily, Jerry's wife said, uh, no, <laughs> you're going to put on a suit coat and be intelligent. You're, you know, people are watching you as any role models, not just your, you know, both your humor. So I think your wife behind every successful man is an exhausted woman. Um, so, uh, again, to get this out of the way, Jer just for anybody who thinks he had a, a, a silver spoon in his mouth, he came here, I uh, believe, from Taiwan, and his uh, mom and brother didn't speak English. The only the only word he knew was shoe. Is that right? Shoe. The only U.S. word, only American word he knew was shoe. I don't know where that came from. No, that's another hour-long interview, but it was shoe. And he learned English in three years. Uh, Jerry did. And this just shows you, again, this up from nothing spirit. My new book of, 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 of uh, Jerry thought he was a winner before he won anything. And a lot of that came from his family. And a lot of Jerry in my conversation is about the privilege that he had because just of, of how he was raised and the environment that he was raised, he just knew he was a winner. He just had to go win something. And uh, yes, he's gonna be discriminated against because of his heritage and all this, but he didn't let any of that bother him. And his compassion for the black plight, black American plight, where that was in many ways uh, maliciously beat out of us. Uh, uh, not in many ways, it was. Our labor was, uh, we were talking about, you know, trying to get the Asian community uh, and the black community to understand each other better. And some of his Asian friends were like, well, shoot, I worked hard, I struggled. Why can't, wh why is this any different? And, and Jerry and I were like, well, were you a slave? Were you enslaved on American soil? Like, did somebody literally take the labor from your hands and put it in somebody else's pocket? No, reverse transfer of wealth. Did you, were you capital or, or could you not earn capital from your labor? Uh, did somebody deny that? So there were clear differences. And Jerry was the first to say, no, there are distinctions here that makes uh, the African American struggle different. We need to build bridges uh, to each other because look at what's happened when Black folks have been given the playing field that's been leveled. With, they've exceeded, the, of course, of the arts and sports being two examples, and hopefully technology to come. And I think the last thing I'll say about you, Jerry, and then you can take this wherever you want from what I, all, all I'm saying is. Uh, uh, I, I define somebody, somebody's, I think challenges 
reveal your character doesn't build it, doesn't build your character, it reveals it. And Jerry had a whole controversy in China uh, uh, where uh, basically somebody was arrested because of information that Yahoo felt they had to legally give. Anyway, later on, that was the law and he was trying to apply law. But later on, Jerry, if you meet with the families, again, listening and hearing and feeling, not just left brain, right brain, Jerry said, this is not right. And um, we need to do something that's to give voice to the voiceless. And he created a fund. Uh, I'm going to call it a dissident fund, but it was probably something more elegant than that. And that fund ultimately helped to create a museum and other things that are now led by people who feel they need a greater voice. Again, all these are team being examples of the person and the character and the integrity. So Jerry, what's on your soul these, 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 these days? And we're in, we're in a interesting point. I, you know, John, I can listen to you talk all day. And, and when you can say good things about me, like you are, I can listen to you talk all day about me. So, uh, uh, but, you know, I, I, I think you captured well, you know, my approach to life has always been just a, it's a it's a journey about learning. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I tend to think of myself as somebody that um, have my own thoughts and my own direction. I don't always do things that people expect me to do. Um, and I think it takes a little bit of that to be an entrepreneur. It takes a little bit of that to. Uh, build companies uh, that has, um, and, and it takes a little bit of that to spot people who want to build companies. And mm -hmm. and of all the entrepreneurs I've met in my life that are vastly successful, um, they all come in different shapes and sizes and sexes and ages, but, um, but they all had a bit of a contrarian uh, streak in them, if you will. And, and I, I think I'm a little bit of that way. And, um, you know, when, when, when I, when I left Yahoo in 2012, uh, people thought I was crazy, and um, I, I, it was the most liberating day in my life. I felt like the, to to walk away something that I built, but um, but really felt like I um, I could start uh, by being who I am, not what people think I am, which is always associated with Yahoo. Uh, so I, I've um, always wanted new challenges, and I'll be frank with you. I think as an entrepreneur and as a technologist and 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 largely a business person. Um, uh, you know, I've been, you know, less paying less attention to uh, social justice and 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 our our civil rights, um, and 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 obviously, I think we all have been waking up, if not woke up, in the last um, three and a half, four years, uh, for a number of reasons. Everything from Charlottesville to the pandemic, um, and I think you and I started a conversation uh, back in May. Um, there was a PBS um, documentary on Asian Americans. It was a comprehensive five-hour series, and um, and I forced my family to watch it and, and myself to watch it, um, thinking in my head already knew everything in that Asian American documentary, um, and um, and I learned more from it about uh, the plight of Asian Americans in America, whether you're South Asians like Indians. Uh, obviously, the Chinese Exclusion Act going back to the 1800s, um, to the Japanese internment, to the Koreans. Uh, at every opportunity, when America finds it inconvenient to have Asians in their soil, um, something exclusionary and something discriminatory and something racist was done to them. And um, and I don't do this for myself. I, I think people look at somebody like me and says, "Well, you're in the you know you're wealthy, you're doing all this stuff." Um, but I look at my kids who are Asian Americans, my wife's Japanese descent, uh, they don't really identify Chinese or Japanese, they like the food. Um, I look at my friends' kids who are mixed races or, or they're Asian, but they're, they're, they're treating America as home. And I feel like, you know, 150 years later after the railroads were built, um, the Asians uh, don't have a unified voice when it comes to um, talking to our government or talking to this country as a as a whole, so um, we have a lot to learn from other um, minority groups, and um, uh, and 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 I think if an, anything positive that can come out of this, you know, year of misfortunes and disasters is I, I hope um, uh, people of color and minorities and people who are um, uh, uh, underrepresented, and there are plenty of Asians that are, un that are also um, 
not as well off as 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 those of us who are managed to be successful that we we, we all see each other's um identify with each other's past we learn from each other's past a lot i learned from you about uh the reversal transfer of wealth and and about you know the um the amount of capital and wealth that was built on the backs of of american slaves these are all things that i i, I never thought i would learn and um and i'm doing it as part of my journey as i said and if i can do something good out of it um Great, but I I kind of I kind of march to my own drumbeat, and and I just hope my my upbringing, my moral um, compass, and my uh, what I am learning about what's wrong or right continue to guide me. Yeah, well, you know, Quincy Jones once said that you have you know God gave you two ears and one mouth, so you listen twice as much as you talk, and you're a great listener, and I guess one of the reasons you're so smart. Um, what have you learned in the last 12 months? Um, uh, what have you learned from the African American experience that can help the Asian experience in the way in which you just described? And what have you learned about the human condition in the last 12 months that you hope will reinvent itself or advance itself to help the world going forward? And I guess the third question is, uh, and you're so smart, you can stack this in your brain, what advice, counsel, or direction do you have for leaders today? You know, John, I'm I'm a little bit older than you, and I, my memory is not what it used to be. So you keep stacking them up, you're gonna get you're gonna get mumble jumble coming out of me. I, I you know, look, I I I, um, I, I really, uh, you know, in in some ways, I am uh, trying to do some work around really figuring out how Asian Americans can have more of a, a national voice, have a, a seat at the table, uh, whether it's representation, whether it's um, thinking about uh, collective issues around racism. Um, and these are, are issues that are on the rise rather than um, things that, that uh, maybe 20 years ago, people wouldn't have noticed as much. And, um, and so, so we are learning from um, our uh, uh, counterparts and the African American community, or the Jewish American community, or the Latino X community, mm -hmm. um, and 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 the word that is always comes to mind uh, that we learn from these other communities is that um, you have to have a multi generational strategy, right? And a lot of our Asian American philanthropies and community efforts are based on people and 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 their you know sort of lifetime and if if uh if if they retire or if they move on then then a lot of efforts stall or stop and when we look at you know the the the, the african-american community um you know thurgood marshall was planning on court cases that didn't come to fruition for decades uh mm -hmm. and and so you have that kind of vision to say we have to have decades long of thinking about what's the best way to keep advancing the asian american opportunity interest fairness, equality, whatever word you want to use, that's something that we've learned, that, that we don't have something that can survive the test of time. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a geek. I'm a left brain guy. I'm an engineer. I'm a science-based guy, John. So I would say that, you know, what I learned about humanity is that, you know, pandemics don't uh, discriminate against race and it doesn't care what position you're in. You could be the president of the United States or you could be uh, farm working in Salinas. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think um, uh, the environment and whether you want to call it global warming or the warming of our climate uh, is um, is up for debate. It's it's one of those things that's happening and, and our future generation depends on it. And so I can't help but think that we have to act more as um, a united group of human beings than um than the divide and conquer that we've seen and i think um uh i, I just hope it's not too late on some of these issues like climate change but um but but i also am, am hopeful uh to to take the operation hope uh you know that if we put our mind to it we can solve these things but we have to we have to come together more than we are uh dividing um and the last thing i would say to leaders and i said this to Vice President Biden yesterday is, you know, I think I think we um, need to move forward in a way that um, is concrete, that is uh, action oriented, and um, and 
hopefully if he if he gets elected there's a lot more lower hanging fruit but still you know there's a lot of work that we have to do um and and i think leading by action rather than by words is going to be really really important um and this goes around not just for political leaders but also um our corporate leaders and our community leaders um these are these are time to act and time by showing what you can do by doing it rather than saying it yeah Anybody, um, you remembered all three questions, by the way, with, uh, with deafness uh, uh, and accuracy. Um, anybody watching this um, must be shocked uh, by the transparency, um, by the authenticity, um, by the warmth of your soul, um, the depth of your heart, your care. Uh, we're not reading from scripts. We're not. Uh, we're not, you know, we don't, there's no cue cards. Uh, you don't know the questions I'm going to ask you before I ask them. We didn't pre-plan this. We're just having a conversation between friends and people who care. And I, and he's asking, he's answering from his heart. And, um, uh, when people say, um, well, should there be billionaires? Should there be people who have billions and, and tens of millions? Here's your answer right here. Uh, as I was with uh, Shimon Perez and. Israel, and he said, John, people will criticize your work, trying to make free enterprise and capitalism work for all of God's children, et cetera, et cetera. And capitalism is a horrible system, except for every other system. But even if you want to distribute money like a socialist, you got to first collect it like a capitalist. And here's a guy who's amassed a fortune. Him and his wife have made a $75 million contribution to Stanford University. I believe that's for an environmentally, environmentally sustainable building. It might be a museum. You'll tell me what it is for. Made another contribution for an Asian uh, art or history museum. Again, he's talking about generational, multi-generational change. He's making sure that, the, that, that, that he could, does well and does good at the same time. He's trying to figure out how can he make investments that not just are profitable, but also build wealth and opportunity at the same time. He's using his voice for the greater good of society and using his pocketbook to back up his, his values and his principles. And, you know, broke folks can't change much <laughs> um, uh, other than to protest. And I think that our protesters have to go from the streets to the suites. And those in the suites have to respect the voice and the power in the streets because society is created from the bottom in, not the top down. And they build that way too, from the bottom up. And you came from the bottom up. And now you're trying to grab another ladder to bring other people up. And it's not just people who look like you. Uh, so Jerry, I just want to say thank you. And, um, you know, we, we leave every conversation we have unfulfilled because there's no period at the end of the sentence, because that's not the way life works, right? This is a process and it's the journey. And, uh, is there any, Final comment you want to leave with the audience. We're over our time, but I, I felt it was worth it. Hopefully you do too. Is there any uh, uh, comment right. you want to leave with the audience on, on, on yeah, what's no, I, 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 I am um, in violent agreement. And um, uh, I, I, you know, I, 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 um, I, I just, I just hope people um, keep the, the three things that you have said in mind, which is, you know, we're in the resetting period we need to heal and we need to generate opportunity. Opportunity is the thing that, um, you know, every day, every moment I think about, you know, uh, that, that, that keeps me going in the sense of, it could be a small opportunity, the opportunity to go pick a, uh, you know, go pick which burger I want for lunch is, 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 is it keeps me, you know, keeps me salivating. Right. So, um, I just want people to, 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 to think about this as a way of um, uh, finding ways to create opportunity for each other, finding ways for creating opportunity for our country um, and doing it together uh, and not at the expense of, uh, you know, a zero sum game. And, um, and John, I, I, I applaud the work you're doing. Um, and, and I really do think that um, by really doubling down on our beliefs in prosperity and doubling down our beliefs in uh, creating the right amount of incentives so that people can work hard and, and succeed, um, this will be a better place and it'll come and we just have to have that belief. So journey on. Journey on.
Thank you very much for being with us today, Jerry. God bless you. And thanks to your wife. <laughs>